What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my hands-on and first impressions video of the Samsung Galaxy A01 Core. So let's get started. So this is the Samsung Galaxy A01 Core one of the latest budget devices from Samsung. Now this phone is one step below the regular Galaxy A01, so it is a very budget-oriented phone. And take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date price for the phone. But here is the box that it does come in. The device is factory unlocked, and you can use it with your favorite GSM carrier. I did get it in the red color, but let's open it up and see what all we get inside. Now I did already set up the phone for the sake of saving some time. We're gonna put this off to the side for a second here. And the first thing in the box is this packet. We get some literature here. We do have a pair of 3.5 millimeter earbuds, and there is a microphone. We have a SIM card removal tool, and we have a micro USB charger. This is probably one of the first times in a long time I've gotten a charger like this, where the wall adapter is connected to the cable. So pretty interesting there. So we get all the various essentials that we need to get started. Now here is the Samsung Galaxy A01 Core itself. As you can see, this phone is extremely basic. It doesn't even look like a phone that I'd expect to see launched in 2020. But I suppose in order to offer this at a very low price tag, Samsung did have to make some compromises. Now the device features a 5.3 inch PLS TFT display at 720p. We're getting a PPI of 331, an 18 and a half by nine aspect ratio, and a 74.5% screen to body ratio. Now it is actually pretty refreshing to see a device with squared off corners, and I don't know why all of the new devices have rounded corners. In my opinion, that's pretty inefficient. Now you can also see that with this phone, we are getting a very traditional design. There's no notch, there's no hole punch either. This definitely looks like a phone that could have been launched in 2018 or even earlier. Now up top, we are getting a five megapixel front facing camera. Now internally here with the phone, we're getting 16 gigabytes of storage and the phone is compatible with micro SD card expansion. Now I have already installed several applications, but you can see here that with the device, we do get 9.5 gigabytes of space available. So for most people out there, you're definitely gonna want to make sure that you pair this up with a micro SD card. And I'm actually surprised that out of the six 16 gigs we're getting this much available as it is and that probably is due to this phone running Android 10 Go Edition because the system files for Go Edition typically take up a lot less space. Now there's no wireless charging with the A01 core, as you'd expect. We're also not getting a fingerprint sensor, and we're also not getting face unlock. So the only way to access the phone is either with a pin code or you can use a swipe gesture. But beyond that, you're not getting any other ways to unlock the device. Now on the back of the phone, we do have a single camera and it is eight megapixels. Now there's no portrait mode with the rear or front cameras, so keep that in mind. And from what I can see through the viewfinder, things don't look too great, but then again, the quality doesn't look quite as bad as I'd expect. Now I am gonna have to go outside and take a variety of different photo and video samples to really know for sure how good the quality is, but it does seem acceptable so far. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A01 core, we're getting one gigabyte of RAM and we're getting the MediaTek MT6739 processor. Now I have not used a device in quite a while with that processor and for a good reason because it's not really that great. But stay tuned for the full review as I'll give you my complete analysis on the type of speeds you should expect to get with this phone and also we'll do a benchmark test. But I would say that with this device you're pretty much getting it to do the bare minimum tasks such as phone calls and text messages. Yes, you can use this phone for social media and browsing the web but your experience is not gonna be that great. But at a bare minimum, it will work, so that's at least good. Now, video recording with the phone does max out at 1080p. We're getting a decently beefy 3000 milliamp hour internal battery, so expect to get decent battery life with the device. And as I mentioned earlier, we are getting Android 10 Go Edition. So Go Edition is designed to take up a lot less space on the device, but in addition to that, it's designed to be better optimized for weaker processors. Now the phone does come with a variety of different Go optimized applications like Gmail Go, 
YouTube Go, Google Go, Gallery Go, all these different Go apps. And you can also install Facebook Lite and many other Android Go optimized applications. But you also still have the ability to download and install regular applications too. So there aren't really any limitations here with the device as far as what apps you can install. But now that we've gone over the main specifications of the phone, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here. In general, I don't think the display is too bad. It's not going to win any awards either, but I think it does look decent. Now taking a look at the left side of the phone, we do have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right of the phone, we have the power button and volume button. I do think it's pretty interesting how high up the volume button is located. It's kind of inconvenient to reach. I really feel like the power button should have been right here and the volume button should have been right here, but I suppose it just takes some getting used to. Then up top, there's nothing. And then on the bottom, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, micro USB port for charging and data transfer, and the speaker. And then on the back of the phone, we have the camera module, and that's pretty much it. Now we are getting this pretty interesting material here on the back. It is a hard plastic material, and it's also a lot different from any other material that I've ever seen on any Samsung device anytime recently. But so far, the Samsung Galaxy A01 Core seems like a very interesting phone. Now, this phone probably won't be a great fit for too many people out there because it is so low end, but if you either have a limited budget or you're just not into using all the various smartphone features, but you still want a smartphone, then I suppose you could make the case for buying this. But Samsung has so many other options in their A-series lineup that it's gonna be tough for most people to justify getting this just because they do offer so many other great options. Now, I do have a lot of plans on making many other videos about this phone, including some comparisons, so definitely be on the lookout for that. I especially want to compare this device to the regular A01. But if you have any other specific requests, let me know as well. But this is the Samsung Galaxy A01 Core. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.